morning, everybody. Welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. What's happening, folks? And I'm the pod father of gaming, Stephen Bonacore. He. All righty. Well, that's your first April Fool's joke, folks. Anyhow, um, thanks for coming on board. We're back with our normal live stuff here. So we're going to, you know, there's not a ton of news today, but we'll get to the news in a bit. There's actually not a lot to really talk about except for on Board Game Geek. This is the final week of the Jack Bass Memorial Fund auction. Mm. So if you want to donate to that, and I'll tell you what, the 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 Jack Bass Memorial Fund has been very active lately. You don't you don't see this, but Mr. Bonacore can attest to this because he's on the committee. There's a lot of people that come through who have needs, and we talk about them, we we discuss it, we vote, and then we send them money when they need the help. And so all the proceeds of this auction go to that fund. Very, very worthy charity, and please uh, just check it out. Obviously, some of those games out there are quite expensive. People sometimes overbid, which is wonderful because it's charity, but there's some cheaper things there. I see some promo cards on there for 5 bucks and things like that, so it's easy to make a donation, and, and you can just make a direct donation as well. There's a link right there in the first, in the first post. It's pretty impressive, some of the stuff that's there, though. So oh, a yeah. couple companies have come in, give out all their games. There's people put up really cool painting that they're doing. There's all kinds of stuff. So definitely it's it's fun just to go browse through all the stuff. There's a lot there. I got to go snipe some things now. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> snipe. You know. <laughs> Wait till the last five minutes. Yeah, the last, no, the last five seconds. Boom. Oh, All right, well, 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 what do you think about sniping? Do, do you like that when it happens on an auction? Oh, on eBay? It's it's part of the game. Uh, no, not in this regard. In this regard, you make a bid and... No, not for a charity auction. I'm, I'm no, talking no about... I would, yeah, on eBay? Oh, it was like a thing. I had a I had a program back in the day. I don't use eBay anymore, but I had a program that I used to program and says it would snipe at like three seconds before it would put my bid in. True. Wow. Yeah, I don't know that. I mean, I I don't mind the auction itself that you put in. I always felt you go to eBay, you put in how much you're willing to pay, right? And you're yep. done. Yeah, right. right. The problem with sniping programs is they'd come in at the very last second, they would snipe, and it would raise your bid, and you would have to pay more just because the sniping programs came flying through. You gotta just. I mean, the way to do it is that you figure out how much you are willing to pay, yep. put that in. And nope. then walk away. You know what I mean? You have to. Otherwise, you'll have that no, no, no. temptation. But what I'm saying is, is if I put in $30 and it's going for $10, i am like, oh, that's not bad. That's exciting. You watch it. It's at 10 And then Mr. Boniker with his program comes in, and I end up paying the $30 in the last five seconds. Yeah, I'm, not, yes. I'm willing right. to do that. That's the amount I was willing to pay. But it was not – it was a sniping program that, like – build it up to that much that that is what i didn't like please, about please it let me know when you go on and bid on something because i will do that specifically purpose actually i will say with ebay i think the last 10 years i've used ebay, ebay not as much as i used to but i almost always use the buy it now option yeah <laughs> so you know i don't even think about it. like oh they're willing to sell this for 30 dollars. done right, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's what that's what has become more than the the bidding these days i think for me too Alrighty, folks. Well, let's get started with a couple contributors, and then we'll be back with the news. Hey, I'm Jordan. This is Weeknight Gaming, where we talk about a game that works well on a weeknight after working a hard day and, you know, having kids and maybe just living a, a life that is busier than you would like. That's, that's what we all do, anyway. So this is Mandala. Mandala is a two-player game. It's one of my favorite card games that is out right now. I love Mandala. What is one of the things that's unique about Mandala is it is a card game, but the cards in Mandala only have one piece of information on them. And if you're looking at a car, like a deck of cards, there's a lot of information on those cards. Mandala only has one bit of information, and it's the pattern or the color on the card. And that's the only piece of information here. You're going to have this beautiful mat laid out and you're gonna be playing cards on your side or in the shared space. And as you are creating these sets of cards, once uh, the two spaces on the board have all six colors, you're then going to draft those cards back and forth and you're gonna be able to score points for them. But the points of the cards are gonna vary depending on when you collect them. The cards that you collect earlier in the game are gonna be worth fewer points than the cards you collect later in the game. 
Mandala is fantastic, especially on a weeknight. So what makes it such a good weeknight game? There's just a couple different things you can do. It also comes with re a really nice um, player aid with the three different actions you can do on your turn printed on there. So sometimes you might not even have to look at the rule book. You can just look at your player sheet and get going. It is really beautiful. It has a really nice uh, look to the game and it's not a game that you, sometimes an ugly game is one I'm not gonna pull off the shelf as much. This one looks very nice. It feels very elegant and feels like a game that uh, has some gravitas to it. That's Mandala, check it out if you have an opportunity to. Great for a weeknight. I'm Jordan, thanks. Hi everybody. Hello, we are Ryan and Bethany. From Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we're talking about tiny epic dinosaurs. In this game, what you are doing is you are the, basically the ranchers of these dinosaurs. They were able to, to resurrect from old DNA uh, of dinosaurs. Does that sound familiar? Uh, and it always works out every time. Works out great. Speaking of a tiny epic, you guys, you know that Ryan and I like to talk about things that we're doing to achieve better health in our lives. One of the things that I like to consistently do is just read and, and learn more. So I just got finished reading the book um, Atomic Habits by James Clear. And I'm just really curious if any of you guys have read that. It's about building tiny habits to get like greater habits in our life. Any of you have read that, what your thoughts are, could you leave them in the comments below so we can have like a little discussion, little book club, mini book club. There you go. <laughs> Just like a book that made into a movie yes! that this was heavily based off of. <laughs> so anyway, this is a worker placement game. You're collecting all these animals, they're breeding, and you're kind of doing like an order fulfillment kind of a thing. You're selling these animals to contracts to make points. Um, man, these little tiny animal meeples, these dinosaur meeples are fantastic. They're adorable and they look great on the table. I really enjoyed this game. It was a ton of fun for me. And I just thought the the negative things that could happen were very thematic as well. So, like, you have to feed all of your animals, right? And so if you can't feed, if you don't have enough meat to feed the meat eaters, they eat another animal. They eat other <laughs> animals in your farm. Yes, and I just liked, like, and if you can't feed the um, plant eaters, they're going to leave to go get more food so they break down barriers so they can go. <laughs> and I just like that it was, you know, it's always nice when the actions make sense and the things make sense in a thematic sense so you understand the game a little bit more. Yeah, this was a lot of fun for us. Um, we've been kind of playing through a lot of the tiny epics, and this one ranks pretty high for us. Well, everybody, if you want to hear more from Ryan and I, you can find us on YouTube or Facebook. We are Ryan and Bethany at Board Game Reviews. Well, this is Ryan. I'm Bethany, hoping you have a happy, healthy breakfast. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. This is a segment where we take a look at a board game based on an IP, and I tell you if the IP and the mechanisms fit together well or not. Today we're looking at Adam's Family Family Reunion Game. Let's take a look quickly at how it plays, and I'll come back and tell you if the IP and the mechanisms fit well together. So what you're going to do on turn is very easy. You're going to spin the spinner. You're going to move counterclockwise. Normally you'd move this way around the board. No. In Adam's Family, we do things a little differently. We're going to move counterclockwise moving around the board. And whatever space you land on, you're going to do that thing. If you land on any of Morticia, Pugsley, Gomez, Wednesday, Lurch, or Uncle Fester... Then you simply grab the top card of the guest deck, and if you need this, then you would take it. Cousin Lumpy. I don't need Cousin Lumpy, so I would not take him, and I would put him back on the bottom of the deck. Now, there are all these thing spaces around the board. If that click on those, you just simply take the top card of the thing deck, and you read it. If you ever vacation the Bermuda Triangle, take a guest card. I have not, so I would not take a Bermuda Triangle guest card. Now, some of these spots over here, like bury one, that means you can take a guest card from somebody else and put it on the bottom of the deck. Now, the first person to, to get all their four guests uh, and get all four guest cards, and you have to have the food token, then you are deemed the winner of the Adams Family Reunion game. This is a mass market board game, and at the time, not a lot of thought was put into them, and there's fairly a good amount of thought that was put into this. So, I mean, there's little small touches that make it more Adams Family, and a little bit kooky, and a little bit spooky. For example, instead of going clockwise around the board, you go counterclockwise. There's also a 13 on the spinner that will take you to the cellar, where you have a race down the cellar. Kooky stuff, right? And what you're trying to do is bring people to your ball, and but you want only certain people to come. And at the end of the day, it's a spin and move, so surely it's something that most gamers are going to want to play. If you're a fan of Adam's Family, this is probably the best game on the market for that. 
And I do think the IP fits kind of with what's going on, how you're having this party and you're wanting people to come. That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But then the nonsense that kind of goes on and the things that kind of throw sand in your eyes to make the game a little bit different, I do think brings the IP across. It's a very strange game, especially for the time period. And I think it succeeds at that. But this is absolutely nothing that you need to see or probably would want to play again, unless you're a huge fan of Adam's family. In that case, Family Reunion Game is just for you. All right, folks, I want to be very clear here, and there's I'm not joking around at all. All the news we're looking at today is actual real news. Yeah, well, you know, Tom texted me like yesterday, and I told him he wanted to do like fake news. And I said, no, Tom, people would not like that. That's fake news right there. I just said, because I texted Tom and I wanted to <laughs> yeah, do like, something. I wanted to do something fake. And he was like, no, I don't like fake news. I'm like, you're not fun. You are not fun. So we're not doing well, any we, fake news. It, it is not just me who thinks that way, Mr. Bonacore. <laughs> It is the entirety of the Dice Tower. Sure, I agree sure. with that, Bonacore. Come on, this is annoying. There will be plenty of um, dumb fake news out there for you plenty to consume Plenty of today. dumb fake news today. Now, the but first this... piece of thing here sounds like fake news. This... <laughs> That's why I had to say this you know, at the beginning. And I would have said that this is fake news myself, except that I knew about this one, too. But this is actual, actual real news. Yes, we will have Uno the movie no or tv show well, sure. well that's actually show. already out um but well, well there's two things they have the uno live action motion picture but right. there's also going to be an uno television competition yep. where four teams will face off to be the ultimate uno champion i might watch this because i would like to learn uno strategies <laughs> since i i guess I, I always thought the game was lucky but maybe i'm wrong very lucky but. what how do they a live action movie. It's not even an animated movie. There can only be Uno. <laughs> <laughs> so it's um, it's, um, it's, it's gonna an be abstract a... card game. What's what's it about? I mean, yeah, like, it's gonna be a movie, a movie, not like a like a, a championship, like you know, the Magic: The Gathering championship. No, that's what the TV show is. The TV show is the is that. But that says there's going to be physical challenges and trivia and whatever. Um, it's going to be a one season series. Uh, but the yes. live action motion picture, I don't know. I do like this though. Mattel's statement: they said Uno is the most popular game in the world and is a fixture in pop culture, making it the ideal franchise to build a reality game show around. Uh, if they uh, have the gumption to say it's the most popular game in the world, oh, it's it's definitely up there though. A lot of people. Oh, I, I won't argue game. that it's in, probably in the top 10, but I think more people know Monopoly, Chess, and Go. Those three games are more well, – Go is clearly more popular than Uno from China alone. Well, those are public domain things. So of the ones that only they – you know, people can make, like Monopoly and Uno, I would, I would venture – I would say that Uno is probably played more than Monopoly across the world. That's a complete guess, but if, if we had two games in front of us, which one would you play? <laughs> Neither, and let's go get a drink. <laughs> Moving on to the next news. <laughs> a lot of people thought this, again, a lot of people thought this was April Fool's Day. Now, Restoration Games is calling it April Pool's Day. Unmatched has Deadpool coming out. This got leaked, I think, and now they, so they just decided to go ahead and announce it. So, <clears throat> as with everything with Deadpool, this looks like it's breaking the fourth wall quite a bit from the cards to the stuff. This, uh, I'm at... I love Marvel so very much, and Deadpool just, I don't know. I find Deadpool to be okay. I'm not as big of a Deadpool fan. No, I love Deadpool. I, the, the breaking the fourth wall I find amusing slightly. It's like I, Deadpool's my least favorite Marvel Legendary expansion. Um, it's just because it's just because it's it's always in your face about that. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the movies, but just the Deadpool itself. I'm I'm glad to see another single character pack. That's nice. So it's it's because it will be divisive. I I understand what you're saying, Tom. I like that you this isn't coupled with something else you might want. But you go, oh, I find Deadpool too in your Deadpool face. It's too annoying. Yeah, it's just one character in here. 
small pack, Deadpool, you can get it or not. And, of course, there's more Marvel Unmatched coming out, so this will fold into that if you wanted to. This is neat. I'm, I'm glad to see the, the them supporting the different lines they have for Unmatched. The big four, four character packs, the dual ones, and then... The solo ones, there was there was only ever one so far. Uh, Bruce, Lee. Bruce Lee, so Bruce Lee and Deadpool, that's happening. Now that's that would be pretty funny to play, actually. <laughs> that, that would be hysterical. All right, Burnt Island Games has announced Fall of the Mountain Kings. This is a follow-up prequel to In the Hall of the Mountain King. So In the Hall of the Mountain King, really nice, fun, gorgeous game. Fall of the Mountain King is a very different game from what I can tell. It's apparently there was an invasion, so this is chronicling that invasion. Hall of the Mountain King was a polyomino-ish game with cascading resources. You have to see it to play. It's a pretty neat game. So I'm kind of pumped about this. I like what Burnt Island Games does. I think they're a really cool company. I never did play the first one, so I, I don't have a point of reference. Catch a yep, All right. There's a new Epic Encounter. In the Epic Encounter series, which I have not played yet, Temple of the Snake God. This is coming out in June 2021. And it says this, I love this, this Epic Encounter features a boss monster like no other. Contained within this box is a 100 millimeter giant snake miniature. Apparently they have not played Conan the Barbarian since the very first boss monster in that one is a giant snake. But... I, I almost thought this was a uh, April Fool's joke. It's like almost that you buy the game to get this this miniature, which oh, looks very nice. That's happening. Yeah, I mean, it looks nice. It's a nice miniature. Um, I hope they have I hope they have a nice game here too. Um, cooperative game, yes. Uh, what is this game? Is this a, is this an expansion to a game that's out? Is this a new game? I'm confused. Well, I don't know. It it's it's like it works. You can use this miniature with 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, but you can also... I don't know. Let's move on. I'm, I'm really confused on this one. It's a nice miniature. Well, Plan B Games apparently is working on making every game in existence into a trilogy at this point. Now, this is only the second game, but we have a sequel to Camel Up called Camel Up Off-Season. And I did notice the, that they are clearly making it called Camel Up here. That C in Camel doesn't even come close to the U. Yes, yes, good. I think, I think they're like, all right, all right, Stop all right. that foolishness. <laughs> Although, I am. this looks like a completely different game, like not even close. Correct, right. Yeah, unfortunately, my first reaction, I think, uh, unless they, they clean this up, will be the same for a lot of people. It looks like an expansion, right? It, it definitely looks like, like an expansion. Camel up, off-season, expansion. It's not. It's a completely standalone game, and that really should be very clear from that, uh, from the packaging, from their naming structure. I don't know what they need to do, but I guess they don't really care if you buy it as an expansion. Yeah, you know, but, I, uh, I guess I'm a little worried about that because if you saw this at the store, and maybe even if someone was going to go buy Camel Up, don't you see that this could be bought almost by accident? I, I do. The title of the game, Off Season, is the smallest thing on that cover, right? By far. It's like a tiny, it's a bunch of big faces. It says Camel Up. And then Off Season and a little tag near the bottom. It's smaller than their logo. So, yeah. I don't know. You know, I, I hope it's good, but I also hope it's not confusing. It seems neat. It seems like a nice twist using the same theme. All right, speaking of new themes, For the King and Me, this is coming from Yellow Games, and this is a rebranding of Biblios. Biblios, a game about a library, a monks in a library, is now themed with a, a different theme. I don't know how to describe it. I mean, it, I don't know that it's, this theme excites me at all. It's supposed to be a... a a child monarch, and then the people around the child are attempting to, you know, sort of uh, share power with that king. 
take a little bit for yourself, you know, because they are just a child. That's the idea. I, I, I like the look of this quite a bit, actually. I think it's a very bright, cartoony, cute look. I think Biblios is one of those games that can be hard to get to the table because it looks so dour and so serious. Yeah, but I wonder why they didn't keep the same name. Just, yeah, I so, mean, they could have made it look nicer, just kept it called Biblios. Yeah, is, so this is the same game, simply rethemed. I believe so, so yes. Yeah, because people... I, people who love Biblios love Biblios. It is kind of weird that they would just change it completely and then. Well, here's the thing. No people mention of who Biblios. Hate Biblios hate Biblios. <laughs> so there's also that. <laughs> Do you know people like that? All right. No, but I know people who dislike Biblios, and you know how they feel about Biblios. They dislike it. They dislike it. it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Hey, let's man. jump to Yellow is also introducing. <laughs> A line of expert line. This is a new, th a lot of companies are doing this these days, kind of trying to differentiate their games, starting with a company called Core Rise of an Empire with a queen who has an incredibly symmetrical face. I mean, she is looking at the camera straight on. As yeah. opposed to, like, in the top corner, you see the polis that that woman's looking off to the side. I don't know. I like that art better. The core, it's like, it, it almost looks fake. Her, like, she is. Straight on. If you if you cut that face in half, it's perfectly symmetrical. She's staring you down, Basil. Yeah, she's challenging you to try this expert line of games. Yes. You're not smart enough to challenge <laughs> Play her. Play this game. You're not smart enough. Oh, I do like the cover. I think it looks cool. And I think it sounds interesting. It says optimize your dice rolls, collect taxes, send your army to colonize foreign lands. If this is a bigger game, it's been... I can't even remember the last bigger game Yellow's done. Can you, Z? I don't No, I don't know. Um, no, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they've done mostly lighter games. So I like Even the artwork. Their big games have been light games, you know? So this is basically a, a redone version of this improvement of the Polis, which, as you can see from the cover in the background there, pretty terrible cover. So these are all the same game, is what you're saying? Yes. And it's, it's gone through these expert these Expert game of the year from Tokyo Market, so... Okay, cool, cool. That sounds interesting. I'm I'm excited for that. All right, Make Make is a game from Chile. This is an Easter Island themed game. Easter Island, the two most known facts about Easter Island, it has those huge statues, and it also has inspired two thousand games. Um, you don't, uh, I think, you don't think I this assume, is pronounced Make Make. Yeah, I was gonna say the exact same thing, Bonico. I assume it's pronounced Make Make. Make Make. Well, at least it's not called Rapa Nui. <laughs> no, we have you one know, of those, I think. Easter Island. Already, like, already. Yeah, those exist, yeah. <laughs> so that's just a three to four player game. So that's going to limit it to some degree. It looks very abstract-ish. But I don't know. I'd give it a whirl. I kind of like the look of those pieces, but it looks very abstract. Definitely yeah. an abstract. I'm be. mostly interested in this because, hey, it's from Chile. And I like to see games from... Countries that we don't often see games from. So that's kind of cool. What's the um, publisher? Uh, oh, it, it's... Sir, 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 I can't pronounce it. So, <laughs> I, I only wanted you to try to pronounce it. I... Oh, that's messed up. Sir <laughs> Cotel. I'm pretty sure it's Sir Cotel. Thank, Thank you. All right. New York Times profile Matt Leacock. He's designing a new climate change themed game. Um, and it's called Daybreak, which always makes me think of getting trapped in the, in the tunnel under New York City with the water coming in. Uh, but, oh, so that's interesting. I always am excited when we, you know, the hobby makes the, the major news, New York Times. That's pretty cool. This is serious news, actually, that, uh, that he was in there. And it was, like, the thing was all about him and the game Pandemic. You know that, you and now he's doing one on climate change. Jokey news. What? This is I'm serious, Tom. Okay, no. don't <laughs> smile while you talk about this. Yeah, like I don't get what you mean. We, I just announced it. You're like, it's well, serious. Means this is big news, is what he meant. Thank oh, you. <laughs> thank you, Z Garcia. You're Much welcome. more intelligent than other people on here. Okay, go ahead, oh, keep, keep oh. going. Thank I'm not you. arguing that. He is definitely more intelligent than the other people here. Oh my! All man. right, we're in a conundrum. What a pickle. <laughs> All right, have y'all ever heard of a designer called Reiner Knizia? 
Be he serious is. about this, okay? <laughs> right, Dr. Reiner Knizia. Dr. Reiner Knizia, as you all know, a few years ago invented the deck building genre and right. now has decided to invent a new thing, cooperative deck building genre. He, he, he created deck building? No. No, that's a joke that we have here. We. Oh, I'm sorry. I... The, Reiner Knizia always says he never plays other people's games. Yes, and I know that. Makes a version of other people's games several years later. So uh, he made a deck building game a few years ago. What's, oh, okay. it, uh, what's it called? Uh, El Dorado. Roto El Dorado. Dorado. Right, right. It's a good game. It's a fine game. So yeah. here's another one now cooperative deck building game, which again has been out for several years. This cover does not look like a Canizia game at all. That cover <laughs> looks fantastic, I have it's to say. Cover, this is the C We're looking at the Siege one, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it looks great. I, I, I mean, I really like it. I agree. This actually looks really good, really interesting. And look, we make fun of Dr. Kinesia a lot, but he can design some seriously good games, some seriously intense games. Uh, I don't know what this one is going to be, but I'm drawn to the fact that it's an interesting siege-type game, cooperative for one to four players in a fantasy setting. I'm intrigued by this. Oh, I am too. I, yeah. I, I, that cover alone is a great cover, but that's not it. He also is designing a game called Family Inc. Now, I don't. This is uh He says it's similar to a game he did called Cheeky Monkey. Okay. Um, okay. which I'm not going to quickly. Yeah, Cheeky check Monkey is this uh, it's a chit pulling one. You pull a token and you stack it on top of your own stack, but people can. The top one is vulnerable to other people. Yes, I never reviewed this one, so hmm, interesting. So this is probably a very similar. Okay, well, that's it's hard for him to make a game these days and then not be similar to some other game he's made. He's made like five five hundred games. It's well, you know, actually he's over well over six hundred, I think now. Don't crazy. Correct me. Don't correct me. <laughs> now, speaking of that, his next game he says is similar to one of his games too, but this game looks like it's this looks like a Feld game. This is Witchstone. Isn't that? This is a co-design between Dr. Rainer Canizia and Martino Z. How do you pronounce that last name? I don't Chiaquiria. know. Chiaquiera. That might be Italian. Martino. It's probably Spanish. No, it's not Spanish. It's definitely not Spanish. I believe Portuguese? this person might be Portuguese or, Portuguese. or Brazilian. Yeah. Anyway, this is there from we go. And R&R Games will be bringing it. So May or June. And it has some theme about witch stones or whatever. But... There are domino tiles that are hexagons on part of them. It looks like a full-blown big game. I don't remember the last time I've seen a game this size from Kinesia. This, yeah. this looks cool. I'm getting some, um, what's that cauldron one called? Um, I'm getting vibes of that game. The witches of whatever, the kook, quacky, quack, quackalos. Quack Quellenberg? Yeah, that, that thing. It kind of um, looks like that a little bit. Uh, yeah, it definitely looks interesting. Big game. It's it's something that we haven't seen from him in a while. Hook does, I, I know, a lot of uh, development, a lot of development on games. So I have a good feeling that this could be end up a, be a very good game. All righty. Well, folks, that's it. That's the news. Let's jump out of this and we'll be back. In this episode, we're going to talk to you about some dice games your family would love to play. Yes, yes. And the first one on our list is Roll For It. Woo! Roll For It, roll yeah. For it. You, you roll them dice. dice. You have cards. You just have to meet the criteria on the card to gain the points. I almost feel like you're in Vegas, baby. Yeah. Now, the next one is a beautiful game called Sagrada. Mm -hmm. Now, Sagrada, you have dice and you're making stained glass windows. Stained glass dice. windows. Yes. 
Yes, and on the next one, we have Champions of Midgard. Being those Vikings, you know, yeah. trying to get that glory. Oh, and you're rolling dice, you yes. know, you know, recruiting dice mm -hmm. to be your warriors, and they're using them to fight yes. monsters and stuff. Love that. Love it. And last but not least is Ooh. Dice Hospital. Trying to save your yeah. dice people so they won't <laughs> die on you. You got dice people. Yeah. And it's a one, these are wonderful games. Mm -hmm. They're gateway games. Some have middle weight yeah. uh, variants to them. I mean, these games are something that your family would love to play. Yes, have fun, family, and let's have some fun with them dice games. All right, that's it for us. Yay. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>
Why? Because I've, because I've lost the last three games in a row? My reign yes. of terror has gone to a reign of terrible, I would like to point out. But uh, oh. you can't pick the same answer the other person picks. Uh, it's been bad. So can I wait for him to decide then? Yeah. Well, sure, because you Half- can't pick the same answer. It'll be the same when it's your turn to go first. Oh, man. This is actually hard. Um, you know... You find it amusing, right? I'm going to go out on a limb. Okay, that's not one of the choices. I, <laughs> people are going to say, hate it. But it could be number one. But I'm going to go with it, because it could be number two. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing. <laughs> I'm going to say, ignore it. Because I think people are mostly going to hate it or say whatever. I guess whatever and ignore it is very similar. But I'm saying ignore it. All right. Number six, the one no one picked was I Create It. Big shocker Good. there. Oh, Number buddy. five okay. is I really enjoy it and wish there was more. So the, the, the highest levels are out. Number four, I Ignore It. Oh, man. Giving the people a point. Number three, barely, I Hate It. Giving oh. Mr. Bonacore two points. Number one answer, I find it amusing, beating out, I don't care for it, but whatever. These were all ranked the exact way you read them out to us. Do you realize that? No. Oh, I realize that, but did you realize that? I thought don't don't care was number one right just now, right? No, amusing. Amusing was them? Okay, sorry. Yeah, it said literally the order he read them. Amusing, whatever, hate it, ignore it, wish for more creative. Uh, I'm seeing a flaw in your system, sir. (laughs) Next one. And the next one, you can vote on more than one answer here. Whoa, hold so on. talking about practical jokes, I asked people, which of these practical jokes have they participated in? Mm-hmm. So we have the whoopee cushion. And whoopee. I'm going to explain each of these for people. If, I don't know what they call the different countries, but this is the one where you put it on someone's chair, they sit on it, and it makes a fart sound. <laughs> then we have the joy buzzer. That's where you put the little buzzer in your hand, and when you shake someone's hand, it either shocks them or makes a noise. Then we have You're going to get punched in the face. TPing <laughs> someone's house. TP stands for toilet paper. That's where you drive to someone's house at night, throw toilet paper on it. All over the trees in their house. Then there's the ding dong ditch. That's where you run up to someone's house, ring the doorbell, run away before they catch you. There's stink bombs. I hope that's self explanatory. Yep. And sleeping pranks. Anything that has to do with people sleeping, whether putting their finger in a cup of warm water or drawing on their face. Stuff like that. For the so record. A cushion, joy buzzer, toilet papering, TPing someone's house, ding dong ditch, stink bombs, and sleeping pranks. For the record, I've done every one of these things. Have you? Every uh, one. I, I don't think I've TP'd a house. I might have, but I did bad things with like Eggs and shaving cream as a, you know, as a kid on Halloween. Except for I've never done the ding-dong ditch. I'm too afraid to do that one. All of them. I've never done the, when you ring the bell and you put the flaming bag of poop. (laughs) That's a a bad one. That seems rude. That's so mean. (laughs) Well, I haven't done any of these. Uh, Really? Like ever in your life? That's correct. You're a nice person. You're a, much nicer than either of us. I was a good kid when I was growing up, and I'm a very much better adjusted adult. So, um, like in college, though, you never did like the if someone fell asleep, you never drew a mustache on someone's face. Correct. Never wow. did that. Wow. Ah, all right, nice guy. Um, so, all right, Z, you're first. Uh, what was the what were people voting for? <laughs> Like, what was the question? Which one would you rather do? Which I, one's I, funny I, or what? I participated in them. They could have voted for more than one. Participated in it. Um, right now, I'll, I'll tell you this. 90, yeah. at, at, right now, as I'm speaking, 96 people voted, but there are 205 votes. Got it. All right, fine. So I'm going to go with uh, Sleeping Pranks is going to be the number two. Got it? <clears throat> um... I'm going to go Ding Dong Ditch. All right. Well, it's a sad, sad day for the people. The number one answer was Whoopee Cushion, which just barely beat out Ding Dong Ditch. <laughs> <laughs> the 
barely beat out Sleeping Pranks. So four points for Mr. Bonacore, bringing him up to six. Two points for Z, and no points for the people. So the score is Mr. Bonacore six. Z has two points, and the people have one. What was the order? Yeah. Whoopee Cushion, Ding Dong Ditch, Sleeping Prank, TPing Someone's House. Then we have a big drop down to Joy Buzzer and Stink Bombs. Oh, yeah, that seems... Stinks. That not only did I up. not only did I stink bomb somebody, but we 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 lured some people into a shed and we and we threw the stink bomb in and then closed the door on the shed and held it there so they couldn't get out. A shed. It sounds so creepy, you weirdo. No, oh. <laughs> oh, it was a shed in a my in an hey, hey, you want to come in the shed? And we stink bombed them in the shed. It was so I'm such a that was terrible. I feel I so bad. How old were you when this happened? About eight, eight years old. So like in was, 1901 was, or something. I was All right, let's jump when you were doing that. Probably. Which of these holidays, and I'm using holidays here in quotes, is your least favorite? Least we favorite. have April Fool's Day, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Halloween, May the 4th, that's Star Wars Day, or Black Friday. Which of these holidays is your least favorite? April Fool's Day, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Halloween, May the 4th, and Black Friday. And yes, folks, I know that these are not technically real holidays. Okay, least favorite. All right. That's you first, Bonacore. Um, vote. Oh, people could only vote for one. Just give me a, 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 just a bit more for people that some of these sure, votes are sure, voting sure. on this one. is so closer this- than I had anticipated. We want to know who the least, which one they will vote as their least favorite. That is correct. All They're right. all so good, though. <laughs> well, I like a lot of these holidays. I mean, I well, really like what your favorite is. You also used to at some oh, point really? own really? a joy buzzer, so I wouldn't take your uh, your word. I will say, as, the, as someone else who's also owned a joy buzzer, they are tremendously not satisfying. They, yeah, don't, they work don't work well. as well as you might think they would. Yeah, I have. I am very sensitive to electricity, so and I think that's what they do. They shock you, right? Well, it's not, it's no. I'd say a few of them do. Most of them just go. Bzzz. They just it make is, a buzz sound. Okay, well, if Does I get shocked with a joy buzzer. All right, go ahead, Mr. Bonko, you're first. Okay, good, good, um, good. Okay, I'm going to say April Fool's Day. All right. I'm going to say Whoopee Cushion. <laughs> Z? Whoopee Cushion Day. I'm going to say Black Friday. Yeah. Right. I think people just like that, though. Too many people like it. I don't. That's my least favorite. All right. Well, the least, the one that got the least votes is St. Patrick's Day. Really? Okay. Well, I don't know. A lot of people don't like the drunken behavior that can happen on St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. And the fact that everyone in America seems to be suddenly Irish. You know, no oh, matter you're saying St. Patty's Day is number one, the one no. that got the most votes. No, got no. the least votes. Oh, so you're saying people do like the drunken behavior. Okay. Yes, that's Fair exactly enough. what Tom and said. Halloween yeah. right behind that. Really? And May the 4th. So the top okay. three here. Number one, and this is really close, is Black Friday. <laughs> And then there was no number two. It was a tie, or there was two. It's a tie between April Fool's Day and Valentine's Day. They tied exactly. So they're both so number three. Three. three points. No. Oh, Four points. come on no. now. Four. I I need that FAQ quick. <laughs> this is it seems off. Suspicious. Bonacore is up to nine I... points. Z has two points, and the people have three. Oh man. The reign of terror again begins. Well, let's be careful. There's still four more questions. Here we go. Now let's jump to which of these holidays is your favorite? All right. So I put Mother's and Father's Day together. So Mother's or Father's Day. Christmas. Easter. New Year's Day. Independence Day or similar national holidays. Whatever your that type of holiday is all over the world. Or my birthday. And by that, I mean... Your birthday. person who's voting, not my birthday. <laughs> Tom Vassell's birthday is my favorite day of the year. Because <laughs> I can send him a stink bomb in, a, in the mail. You're right. I should have wrote your birthday there. Folks, hopefully, if you're listening, I mean your birthday, not my birthday. <laughs> All 
All right, so we have Mother's slash Father's Day, Christmas, Easter, New Year's Day, Independence Day, or similar national holidays, or the person who's voting's birthday. <laughs> New Year's Day. It, what is your, and this is everyone's favorite holiday. Favorite oh, holiday. Favorite, yes. And Z is going to be going first. Wow. Um, I don't know. Uh, these are going to be near the top. I'm going to say Mother's slash Father's Day. All right. Really? That's yes, me. Bonacore. That's number three. I'm telling you right now. Because number one is Christmas. Number two is your birthday. Tom's birthday. No, the everyone's birthday who's voting. Unless they got it wrong, they thought it was Tom's birthday. Then it's if last. somebody's it. birthday is the same as your birthday and they're voting, Tom, how's that work out? <laughs> All righty. I'm a rules well, lawyer. You know what I mean? Let's not rules lawyer us too much, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Garcia, because apparently we have a bunch of ungrateful children voting at this poll. Because oh, the lowest one was Mother Father's Day. Wow. Oh, are you kidding is, me? You guys voted for sad. your own birthday over your parents. <laughs> that is, I, I want to say how sad that is. That really is awful. Those are and the kind New of Year's people Day, who own a whoopee. Number machine. five, Independence Day and Easter tied. Then my birthday, second place. Christmas got 80 votes. My birthday got 16. But hey, Mr. Bonacore, you scored Close. again. Plus four. Scores are 13 for Mr. Bonacore, two for Z, and three for the people. No, five for the people. Gave, five I just gave people. it more points, yeah. Thank Great. you. Keep it keep it uh, close, Z, by giving people points against me. I like that. Okay. All right, okay. so if we're picking a villain. At some point, I should just switch teams and just try to have the people catch up to him, Tom. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> <laughs> um... So a villain from Batman who would like April Fool's Day would be the Joker, but the Joker's not part of this poll. I want to know, of these six Batman villains, which is your Joker is not included. All right, so here we repeat, go. Your, repeat, repeat favorite? Favorite? your favorite villain of these six Batman villains. Favorite villain. All right, so we have Two-Face, the Riddler, Scarecrow, Ra's al Ghul, Penguin, and Mr. Freeze. Two Face, Riddler, Scarecrow, Raza Ghoul, Penguin, Mr. Freeze. Just like I should have cut Christmas out of the last poll, I cut Joker out of this one because I figured he would win by a mile. So I think the Z is going to get to go first this time. Hmm. Oh. I feel like the Joker, though, would do something. He probably There's probably issues of the comic where he's done stuff on April Fool's Day. Yeah. I feel, I feel that be. way. All right, I'm going to go with Scarecrow. Scarecrow, uh, all right. Yeah, pretty sure I know who number one is going to be here. Mm-hmm. Um, due to the popularity of Gotham, I think I'll go with the Penguin. The Penguin. That's actually a pretty interesting depiction of the penguin in Gotham. I, it's, I think it's great. TV show Gotham? Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't like most of the things in that show, but the depiction of penguin I like. He's great. That actor is phenomenal. All righty. So what did you think was number one then, Mr. Bonacore? The Riddler. And that is correct. The Riddler oh. does come in as number one. Number two, Raz Agul. Ooh, I was going to go Raz. Then He's number got- three... Penguin. Okay. Take two number points. four, Mr. Freeze. Number five, Scarecrow. And number six, Two Face. I'm so defeated. <laughs> now so I, I know Bonnet feels like every week. This is me right. last, last, last week against the, against the movies. All right, um, Mr. Bonnet has 15. Z has two. And the yes. people have six. Yes. This is going to turn me into a villain. Uh, one that plays pranks on people during any holiday. The, the prankster. I, bet, the I believe they have one of those already. Prankster. <laughs> oh, uh, well, his name Shake is. my hand. Well, excited because tomorrow we get to see Godzilla vs. King Kong. So we're going to talk about movies with giant monsters. Which oh. of these movies with giant monsters is your favorite? Although I did not pick Godzilla or King Kong. These are the movies I picked. We have Anaconda. With the giant monster snake. 
Mighty Joe Young, the kind King Kong, the Mist, which has crazy nasty monsters in it, Rampage, which is a video game brought to life, Clash of the Titans, which has some pretty big monsters in it, and Pacific Rim. Robots vs. Monsters. We have Anaconda, Mighty Joe Young, The Mist, Rampage, Clash of the Titans, and Pacific Rim. I deliberately did not pick movies that were too highly rated. And the the uh, question our favorite movies of these Giant monsters. monsters is your favorite. Um, I go. Do I go? Oh, I should wait though, probably a little bit. Uh, I don't know. Let me see. Blah, 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 blah. That one's six. That one's five. I go first here. I think. Do I go first? Four. Or that one. Tom, who goes first? Um, Z gets to go first. Oh, okay. no, wait. No, Z went first in Batman villain. So you're going to go first. No, no, wait. Who said Penguin first? I said Scarecrow first? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, you did. Okay. All right. Don't pick. Uh, Don't pick mine. I will. Should I go? Should I pick? Go ahead. I'm going to... This is going to be a fairly big spread here. But I'm going to go with a recent one. I'm going to go with Pacific Rim. Which uh, what was it? Which wasn't horrible. It That's just number wasn't, one. Like, cool. It might be, but this... Clash of the Titans. There's some classics on here. Mighty Joe Young is pretty cool. I'm going to go with Release the Kraken. Because I think it's number two. I think Pacific Rim's going to win, and I think the rest of them, like Anaconda's going to get half a vote. <laughs> Actually, Anaconda got seven votes. It tied with Rampage for the bottom. All right. Then Mighty Joe Young. Then The Mist, which I believe of the movies here would be Z's favorite. I like The Mist quite a bit. No, I like Pacific Rim a lot. Yeah, uh, it does pretty good. you like the sequel? No, it's okay. I actually like the sequel more than I thought I would, um, even if it was Voltron, essentially. But all right. Number one, yes, by a mile, Pacific Rim. Uh, number two, Clash of the Titans. And the scores have changed. Take Mr. it. Butler now has 15. Z has six. Whoop. And the people have eight. Oh, nothing changed. Very okay. close. Very close. No. Uh, I guess I could. Seventh poll? Another poll? I guess I could double the points. No, that one was ball. double points. It's the last question. That's how it always goes. <laughs> All right. And you still lose. Which, this oh, one has seven answers, though. Which of these giant creatures would win in an all-out brawl? Anaconda. All right. We have King Kong, Godzilla, Clifford, the big red dog, Voltron, King Ghidorah, the Cloverfield monster, and the Kraken. Okay, slow it down. Say it yeah. again. So which of these giant creatures would win in an all-out brawl? Yeah. King Kong, yeah. Godzilla, Clifford the Big Red Dog, Voltron, King Ghidorah, the Cloverfield Monster, or the Kraken? King Ghidorah? That's the one from the last Godzilla movie that he fought with the dragon heads. Right. I guess. Cloverfield Monster and... The Kraken. What was the last one? The Kraken. Is he released? Are we assuming he has been released? <laughs> if so, that's a dangerous foe. Mm. And Clifford, is he? Uh, did he get enough sleep? <laughs> I don't Was actually he... know anything about Clifford the dog, like at all. I know he's a big dog. That's it. Uh, Tom was being facetious with that one. Oh, well, not oh, oh. Facetious. Clifford the Big Red Dog is considered a kaiju. <laughs> By who? By he is a kaiju. By the internet. The Ooh. internet does not consider him a kaiju. Nobody considers Clifford the dog. So is Garfield the cat a kaiju? No. no Do you he's understand small. what that means? What a kaiju means? No, Garfield the cat's a normal sized cat. He's a big, big fat cat. He probably weighs 25 and pounds. He's a really big fat cat. Look up Clifford kaiju and you will now. be surprised. How big is Clifford? Just tell me how big you think Clifford is. Give me a, give me a thing. Ten He's feet? Like the size of a house. Ten feet? Twenty feet? Kaiju a lot bigger than that. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Somebody um, takes their kaiju very seriously. I take my kaiju seriously because I'm gonna go see a kaiju movie tomorrow. I, <laughs> ah! All right, see you're first. Which one are you picking? I'm going with 
one of these. And I think it has to be the one with the and the the, the right. Yeah. King Kong. I don't know. King Kong. All right. King Kong should be number one, so I won't King pick Kong King Kong. is going to be number two. Uh, so I'll pick Godzilla because... He's number one, fool. Well, no, King Kong beats Godzilla. I'm telling you. So we'll hey, find hey, out tomorrow. Spoiler alert! That's not a spoiler. I don't know about tomorrow's movie. You just got canceled King... for, for spoiling this, man. I, I, I saw the first movie. Actually, I heard Clifford ago. the dog makes a cameo in the movie. That's wrecks it. <laughs> <laughs> and he like Hang shatters on. buildings with his bark. All right. So number six with one vote is King Ghidorah. <laughs> it deserves one vote. Nobody number five with nine votes, King Kong. There no, that's go. number six. Six. Sorry. <laughs> number five oh. with ten votes, the Cloverfield Monster. Okay. Number four with sixteen votes, the Kraken. Number wow. three with 19 votes, Voltron. Oh my God. Would you like to change your answer? I would like to change my answer now to Clifford the Big Red Dog, please. Uh, number one with 33 votes, Godzilla. Oh, number yes. two, Clifford the Big Red Dog with 25 votes. It's awesome. That's ridiculous. Oh, it's ridiculous. My goodness. My goodness. This is serious, people. This is serious. I can't believe you people That was the them. double point round, leaving Z with six points. Right. Mr. Bonacore with 15, and the people with 14. Oh! They almost, almost got, you. got it. Serious. Yeah. All righty, folks. Well, there you go. Let's jump to some contributors, and we'll be back. Congratulations, Mr. Bonacore. Hey everybody, Ron here. I'm back with another affordable board game. Today I'm going to talk about Omen. Omen is a game designed by John Cloudus and published by Colossal Games. Two players only, ages 12 and up, with a 30 minute playtime, has a $25 MSRP. Earn the favor of the gods by conquering vast cities with a combination of armies and allies. The setup you place a city board between the two players, shuffle nine reward tiles, and place three face down in each city spot. Place one war torn tile piece side up on each of the tile stacks. Shuffle unit cards and place them in a face down deck. Place the 20 coins in the designated area next to the city board then each player draws four cards and gains four coins now that there are many different modes to add different adjustments to the setup and gameplay but i will leave that for you to discover as there are multiple standalone expansions and smaller expansions in a typical term there are four phases the first phase is a wealth step where you gain three wealth actions to spend. Each step, you can either draw one card or gain one coin. If you do all three, one or the other, you gain a bonus card or coin matching your previous actions. Note that in the first turn, the first player receives only two wealth actions instead of three. In the search step, you spend coins to put cards into play. Once per search step, you can flip a reward tile to the one VP side you use to reward ability. In the war step, first you check to see if any of the cities are war torn. A city is war torn if an opponent has at least three units in the city and or the sum of both players' units total five or more. When a city becomes war torn, flip the war torn token to its war torn side. Note that colossal units count as two units instead of one to determine if a city is war torn or not. Then you check each war torn city to determine who is the victor by comparing the combined strength of each side's units. Tides are broken by the player with the highest total unit cost. The victor gets the topmost reward tile. And finally, the offering step. To make an offering, your active player selects a unit card from the hand and discards it. Then they draw a number of cards or gain a number of coins equal to that card's offering value. The game ends if two or more cities have no remaining war tiles or there's some other condition based on the modes of the game that you play. Each player adds up their victory points and the person with the most points wins. This is a great strategic two-player game in a small box and a short playtime. I highly recommend it. And that was Omen. I hope you folks enjoy. And until next time, see you later. Hi, I'm Tim. I'm Lizzie. And we are To Play or Not. To Play. 
a show about board games for two players. Whose tastes may differ. Hi. Hello. Welcome back to our top ten of games we like to play together. Yes. Want to play together? Today is our number nine, and our number nine game is Lost, Lost Cities. Cities. It's a two-player card game. It says the original card game here. It is. It's a quick game. It's by Cosmos, and you are going on expeditions, aren't you, with with your cards? Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Very thin theme. <laughs> But it's a great card game, isn't it? With the you're playing with the numbers and you're managing your cards and yeah, it's, it's simple, but it's got a bit of thinking in there as well. Yeah, I mean that's why we like it really. That's yeah. why we get it to the table quite a bit. Um, this one is pretty much you, there is a card, uh, there is a table because it's a mm. card table. There is a table <laughs> that you lay your cards against, but you don't really need that. Um, you could just play with the cards. In fact, when we go on holiday, we just take the deck of cards. Mm. Um, very simple. All you're trying to do is yeah. build from two to ten. Yeah. Uh, as you lay your cards, so you pick the cards up from a draw deck, and you're trying to manhandle those cards into order. <laughs> Man hand, manage. Hand, hand manage, yes, <laughs> those cards into order and play them down in order. And but I of do course, like the whole, um, you know, I've got number seven. Yeah. Do I put it down now, or do yeah. I wait for three, four, and five? Yeah, exactly, and that's the point. Bit push your luck there yeah. going on as well. So that's good. that's good fun. Really good fun, and it's very head to head. Although you're playing your own game, but of course. It's kind mm. of it's quite fast paced as well. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice game. Uh, it takes about thirty minutes to play, so nice, quick, simple. And this top ten is about games we like to play together, and yeah. so it basically has to meet us both in the middle. Really, it has to meet us. Yeah, both it's not our my top ten or her top ten. It's yeah. our top and ten our to play together. Do so. differ. So, but this is we both come together on this one. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So check this one out, guys. Um, yeah. Come and check out our channel, to play or not to play, and we'll do a review of every two player game there is in the world. Yes. Probably at some point. Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. See ya. And that's it for another board game breakfast, folks. Thanks so much for Sorry, joining us. Sure. We had a great time. Um, and we're going to get going here. So there's lots of other videos coming out today, folks. We'll see you next time. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I am Z Garcia. Thank you. I'm Stephen Bonacor. Have fun watching Giant Monsters. <laughs> what was that? <laughs>